Living the 80 20th Way by Richard Koch Chapter 6 The 80 20th Principle and the Simple Life In today's modern world, we have a skewed sense of happiness. Many people think they need wealth to buy the things they assume will bring them happiness. Advertising agencies, for instance, focus on keeping people addicted to work so they can continue to buy the never-ending range of new and better products. To stop this mode of thinking, take a moment to stop and think. What do you truly need to make you happy? It's probably much less than you think. For instance, the Greek philosopher Epicurus claimed the basic components for a good life are simply food, shelter, clothes, friends, freedom, and thought. That's it. In other words, less is more, just like the 80 20th principle. Epicurus practiced this philosophy by living a life of simplicity, living with seven friends in a commune. They relied on the land for food, and they didn't worry about accumulating wealth for the sake of buying material items. Instead, they spent their time writing books and sharing ideas. Perhaps it's time to apply Epicurus' philosophy to your own life. Once again, focus on your 80 20th destination and think about what a simple and good life means to you. Begin by writing a description of your ideal life. Perhaps think about the items that you have that provide you with happiness. What do you genuinely need? How often do you use the items you currently own? Why are you working so hard to buy more things you'll never get around to using? Next, find your roots. Find options that are both simpler and better. Eliminate the things in your life that cause worry and add little value. Perhaps think about how you can reduce the clutter in your life or how you can find happiness in simple things. Finally, it's time to take action. Decide on three immediate steps you can take to move towards your destination and ideal life. Let's take a look at Anne, a successful account executive in advertising. Her job paid her well, but she was always exhausted and stressed. Tired of being unhappy, Anne quit her job and moved from a huge apartment into a one-room studio. While her parents didn't support her decision to quit her high-paying, secure job for a life of painting, Anne ignored the critics and did what she loved. Eventually, she began to sell her paintings for good money. At the end of the day, Anne knew her destination and took the necessary steps to get there. She opted for a simpler life and ended up finding happiness and success.